Hello everyone and welcome back to Max DM Crafting. This will be quite a long shot, so sit down, relax, take a beer, take a coffee and try to survive through this. First of all, I like to prepare my pieces with my proxim. In this way, I never had to stop the building process. I tend to prepare a lot of pieces before even start. For the base, this time, I used a piece of foam core about 7mm thick. This will be a townhouse, with the first floor entirely made in stones and bricks. For the floor pattern I like to use my pen and engraved tiles. For a more dynamism, for a beautiful and better texture I use the aluminum foil technique, but also I like to press a little bit some of the floor tiles so you give uh, a more 3D feeling to the whole thing. I then peel off the back part of the foam core, attaching it to a piece of chipboard quite thick. This will give a lot of stability and strength to the base. For the walls the trick is to try to camouflage the junction. In this piece of terrain I will not make the walls visible inside, I will just make the floors taking care only of the exterior of the building. For the junctions I am using the same technique I am using in several of my buildings. It consists in removing some of the bricks in the corner and then after the junction is done with the glue you replace the corner holes with some other bricks. For the door I'm using a piece of foam that is actually 1 inch by 1.5 inch. It is acceptable measure for the door and with a classic engraving technique I'm creating a wooden door with some reinforcement in metal. When you use super glue on the foam, you are going to melt the foam. So never put the super glue directly on the foam. Instead, you put a drop of glue on the chipboard and then after a few seconds, you paste the pieces so you don't melt your foam piece. After some embellishment you can see that uh, a nice door is done. Now for the windows I'm using uh, this technique to create windows in series. Basically I'm creating 5 identical windows so I managed to create a lot of pieces in a row that allows me to save extra time working on the windows once and for all. I then just cut the 5 windows applying them when uh, needed. For the windows I'm using this plastic canvas, you can find the Amazon link in the description box below this video. For this kind of work the Proxon really shows its power, you can do it also without a Proxon, check my Pro Tip series to know how. For the wooden beams I always use the same technique. These are 7mm section beams. I'm using a metal brush for creating the wood grain. 
there will be reinforcement beams all around the building. This is typical of the half timbered houses. I'm cutting the five identical windows with the proxon, so I have uh, five identical pieces ready to use. You need just to remove a square piece in each wall, I need to put a window, and just push in the window like that, a drop of glue, everything is done. As you can see here, I'm making the brick pattern. I have covered this topic in several videos. You can check my Pro Tips playlist to learn this one and other amazing crafting techniques. As you can see, the corner junction between the walls must be done. We create actual holes for the bricks and then we add them very easily. The foam is very flexible, so you can press the bricks inside the little holes and uh, it's done. Easy peasy. For add some extra weight to the entire piece, I like to insert some big screws. Once again, adding some reinforcement beams and now for the balcony and for the bigger upstairs I'm actually carving the foam to obtain a beautiful arch effect on the wooden beams. I'm fixing basically one extremity with a nail and a drop of glue. This is a nice architectural touch that makes a huge difference in the final look of the piece. For the first floor I need a wooden pavement, just engraving lines with my pen here and creating the wood grain. And voila! We have a wooden floor. Since we are creating a building that don't have walls on a playable level, we are going to fix the floor directly on the walls, like that. Never forget to finish all around your pieces in wood with the wood grain to add more realism to the whole piece. Three sustained beams here and some timbers. With a minimum effort you reach a great result if you add these pieces and again for the balcony carved wooden beams. There is not a specific rule for the number of beams that you are going to put. You need to figure it out on the way and define the right amount according to your taste and the logic of the building. Next, the balcony. I'm using my foam cutter to engrave the same design through several slices of wood. Then I just put them together on a base creating a beautiful and effective balcony.
For these walls, I like very much to use uh, this irregular surface of the foam to simulate the stucco effect. Here I'm creating an overlapping window. This step will create an interesting asymmetry in the building, improving the final look. Sometimes it is easier just to put the stucco and then the wooden beams and timbers. And uh, this is a mess. When I'm speed working on this kind of project, time by time I need to stop and just clean everything. Next, I'm creating the roof parts from a template that I often use to give a nice curve to the roof. And in my arsenal I keep these windows from shiftylens.com. In this case, these are the upper parts of bigger windows. I use them cut in pieces, so to speed up the crafting process. A lot of fun! Using square section beams cut in half here. By gluing them directly to the wall, you have the impression that they are inside the wall and not just attached on the external side. Nice! Now the chimney. There are a lot of styles and possible shapes. I like this weird shape chimney and making this one was actually a lot of fun. I like when you have multiple parts on that, so I add a little bits from my Game Workshop Bits and Pieces box. Cool! This time I'm starting from the stucco. It is actually much easier than I attach the chimney and I finish the piece with the support beams. Very, very easy. In this case, as you can see, I'm using half beams again, so the impression is the same as before. adding some reinforcement on the inside here, for two reasons. First of all, to make the piece more resistant and on the other hand, because it is useful having some handle inside to manipulate the piece during the painting process.
creating an interesting roof is one of the most important parts in building a fantasy townhouse. I usually like to create some strange shapes for characterize every single house with a special roof. Basically, every single model is unique and the roof is a beautiful way to make it easily possible. Next, you are watching how I created these two attic windows and also a little tower. All this process is basically improvisational. I like to cut, glue, recut, reglue, make and remake the same piece until I'm satisfied. Here you see how I just cut out the two windows because they were in a wrong position respect to the ground. So yeah, you need not to be afraid to destroy your piece sometime. During the painting process we will follow two different ways. The first one serves to actually create a dark, creepy, Halloween-like uh, house and then from that point we will continue and I'm going to finish the piece with an interesting color scheme for a beautiful townhouse. First of all, I need to create a first coat for priming and protection. Mod Podge, acrylic black paint and water. The proportion is about 20% acrylic black paint, 50% of Mod Podge and 30% of water. I prefer to keep it quite watered down, so the solution can enter in every possible hole and crack and stuff like that. Mod Podge is not just PDA glue, it will cure very hard, like plastic, so to protect a lot the piece. During the coating process, I realized that I was too clean on building the house. So I decided to damage the walls and the roof a little bit, just with my precision knife and my pen. I engraved the brick pattern inside the stucco. Oh yeah, shingles time. This is always the boring part of this work. I like very much to use these coffee stirrers and shingles. I think that in the end they give a lot of extra weight to the piece and the final effect is very realistic. Being the coffee stirrers made in real wood, they are great. So after a while we have all the piece coated in black.
when everything is dried, it's time to use a surface primer. At this point, you can use this primer without any fear to ruin your piece, because the Mod Podge will protect it from uh, the primer's solvents. The primer is great because uh, we can cover uh, all those little cracks and holes that you missed during the first passage, especially because of the glue blobs and various construction mistakes. Hot glue is very hard to paint over. After the first coating, as you can see here, I'm left with these translucent spots. With the primer, you can cover those very well. Now it's time for use the base coat for the wood. I'm using this neutral brown for all the parts that are in wood, shingles included. When you charge the reservoir with some colors that are not for the airbrush, you need to use airbrush thinner. Actually, I prefer to use 50% of the airbrush thinner and 50% of paint to avoid any cloth into the airbrush. There is no secret guys, black and white make grey. <laughs> Please notice that I'm using always flat big brushes. This one is a very big one and as you can see with uh, this kind of brush I managed to do all the details. Uh, you just need a little of practice and most of all when you do some mistakes I try to cover those immediately so I don't uh, forget them and I can keep going on the painting process. I'm always using a semi-wet technique. In this phase you need to cover your piece as much as possible with the basic color, so yeah, let the grey all over the stone. As you can see here, you can reach a lot of parts by using a flat brush. Now, with the camera, we are on my point of view, so you see what I see. Do not forget the cracks and the parts without stucco. Now I'm using a mogany brown that is actually an orangey brown. First of all, I'm mixing it with some uh, grey to cover some alternative bricks. In this way, I managed to break a little bit of the monotony of the grey by choosing just random bricks. Then, with the pure mogany brown, I'm starting coloring all the wood parts. This gives a lot of warmth to the brown. As you can see here, also on the wooden floor, this kind of brown is very warm. I like it very much for uh, this kind of pieces. Next, I'm passing the brush perpendicularly to the wood grain, so you don't put your paint inside the wood grain and the contrast become very effective.
Once all the wooden parts are covered, even if you stop the painting process, you already have something very interesting. As you can see, this house can be used in a creepy environment because uh, these colors are perfect for a creepy haunted house. See the pumpkins? Um, by the way, I need to have a happy and normal townhouse, so let's crack on. I'm using now a semi-wet brush for covering with light grey some other bricks. Once again, I'm choosing random bricks and remember, if you choose a corner one, you need to color it on both the sides. Now I add a little bit of brown to the grey and I'm dabbing with a little piece of toilet paper all around the brick parts. This just breaks the monotony of the color. It is time for a little bit of highlighting, so I'm using a beige brown with a semi-wet brush or semi-dry, I don't know how to call it. I'm covering again all the wood in a very lightly way this time. It's time to choose the color of the stucco. This technique allows you to avoid the weathering technique later on. So you start from your warmer and darker color, in this case the same beige brown that I use for a highlight of the wood. So it's not a problem if you touch the wood a little bit. As you can see, I'm not going all over the piece. I'm just avoiding the corners and this color will dry a little bit darker. So the difference between this and the background will be not so evident. We need to pass all the stucco parts, you just leave the corner dark, ok? You just focus on the central parts and of course around the cracks. Now I pass again all the stucco parts carefully with a lighter beige brown, but this time leave 2-3 mm from the edges and this time I need to actually take care and not to touch the wood. Once again this color will dry much darker so you will not notice so much the difference between the previous colors. Thank you. 
In the end, I just pass in the center of every single stucco part with an off-white. You can do it by using an airbrush for a faster result, but you can also use a normal brush. The roof is the latest part. I start to cover all my shingles with a dark emerald green, trying to cover all the shingles as much as possible. At this point, with the grass green, I'm touching the shingles top down starting from the top. This will give a nice light effect to the roof. In the end, I just lightly touched the edges of the shingles with the lighter grain, always top down, just in one direction. The final effect is very nice. Details, some flowers here, a little bit of flocking and moss there, and uh, the piece become alive. My personal touch, a little nest. Ok guys, this is it for today, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like this video, please hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe this channel. Remember to support this channel through Patreon or Paypal, and uh, yes, I think I'll see you all on the next episode. Thanks for watching, and uh, till next time, happy crafting! Bye.